are all from the seed of Abraham. And that, that has so much depth and meaning. We're not going to go into that. But all that means is this, is that we are part of that inheritance that God has given on Abraham and his descendants. See, there was a, they call it the blessing of Abraham that gets passed down from one generation to the next. And we get to partake in that. Amen? We get to partake in that. That's what's, you know, so awesome. You know, it's interesting that the, uh, you know, pilgrims, when they came here all those hundreds of years ago, and they had that feast that we continue to this day, right? Thanksgiving, that's how it got started, right? Some people have, you know, other, you know, beliefs of how Thanksgiving got started, but basically that's what it was about. It was about people coming together to give thanks. And, and what I think is so dynamic is that we as a nation, we get together once a year and we give thanks, right? We're, we're you know, set, telling our Creator, Father God, hey, we're thankful for all you've done for us. And that's what Thanksgiving is about, is just being thankful. That, that's basically what, it, what it's all about. But where did the pilgrims get this concept or idea from? It's not something they created, right? It's not a, 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 it wasn't like something that was new. They actually got the concept of giving thanks from the Bible. That's where they got it from. And we're going to take a look at some of our, you know, history this morning just to have a better understanding because, see, if you don't know, you know, us Christians and, and Christianity, we have a, a foundation that's based in Judaism. Judaism is the, you know, religion of the Jews, practicing Jews, right? They have a Bible called the Torah. And it contains the Old Testament books of the Bible, the, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, you know, and they also have some other books that they study from, but they primarily follow the Old Testament. But the thing is this, is that a lot of those traditions that they follow up to today, you know, uh, have kind of been incorporated a little bit in Christianity because that's where our roots come from. Who were the first Christians? They were Jews. The first Christians were Jews. So they brought with them a, a lot of their, you know, traditions that today we still actually, you know, celebrate. And so this is, our, this is where we get our roots from. But I want to show you something this morning. We're going to be in the second book of Chronicles will be in chapter 5. And as you're turning there, I'm going to open up in, uh, in prayer. Second Chronicles, we're going to be here in chapter 5. Second Chronicles chapter 5. So as you're turning there, I'm going to open up in uh, prayer. And, uh, oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we dedicate this time to you. We give you glory, we give you honor, O oh Lord, we ask that you speak to us through your word. O oh Lord, we thank you, we give you glory, we lift you up. Oh, we thank you this morning in the precious name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen and Amen, God is good. So Second Chronicles chapter 5, we're going to be here in verse number 1. And the word of God says, Give me a second, I'm in 1 Chronicles. Let me get over to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Is that what I said? 2 Chronicles? Yeah, 2 Chronicles. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 1. And the word says, So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated the silver and the gold and all the furnishings, and he put them in the treasuries of the house of God. You're like, Pastor, I thought we were going to talk about Thanksgiving, not about giving our silver and gold to God. That's not, you're right, that's what we're talking about. Let me explain what's going on here. 
Solomon is king over Israel. He is David's son. David, his father, was king before him. God had put in David's heart, his father, uh, you know, a, you know, uh, how would you say? He, he put a, a, a desire inside of him to build a temple for God. Because you've got to understand, up until this point in history, the children of Israel, although they had a, you know, a huge respect for God and they followed the ways of God, they didn't have a temple that they could go and worship God in. They hadn't constructed one yet. So here, Solomon is talking about that very thing because see, although God had put it in David's heart to build one, David never actually built it. His son Solomon did. And what Solomon is sharing with us here, he says, so all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. They finished constructing the temple which is known as Solomon's temple. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold, all the furnishings, and he put them in the treasuries in the house of God. See, so what's interesting is that Solomon carried out his father's vision to build a temple for God. Isn't that so awesome? He, he carried it out. You know, so even though David wasn't able to do it, his son Solomon did. And it's dynamic to see on how they carried it out with all the specifics and everything else. Now, we're not going to go into that, but when you get a chance, read chapter 5. We're going to skip down here to verse number 13. This is what I want to show you this morning. We're in 2 Chronicles chapter 5. Go down to verse 13. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praise the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Isn't that so awesome? Why is it that when I come up to preach every Sunday, I always say that God is good? Because He is. I want you to get a revelation of how good God is. See, and, and the thing is this, the goodness of God is not based on how your life is going. See, if your life isn't going so well right now, or maybe you're not happy where you're at in life, or maybe there's some things going on in your life that you're having to deal with that aren't so comfortable, aren't so easy, that doesn't mean that God's not good. Amen? See, that is irrelevant that God is good, what you are going through. Now, I know it's very easy to think that, you know, that God is not good because you're having to deal with these things. But that's not the case. And see, this is what we learn from the Word of God, is that He is good no matter what you and I go through. Because see, that is... The, is his character. Amen? The character of God is that he is good. See, so many people have a misunderstanding of God. There are people that to this day will not pray to God. They want nothing to do with God. All based on some situation where they feel God didn't do something that they wanted him to do. Right? Right? Classic example, you have somebody whose you know, relative gets sick, somebody near and dear to their hearts, and we all have relatives that you know, fall in these situations where you know, something happens, they're dealing with some you know, medical issues or whatever the situation is, and then we pray, oh God, heal them or help them, and then they end up dying. And then we're like, well, what happened? Was my prayer not filled with enough faith? Did God not hear my, my prayer? Right? And you start to question what happened. Now, there's nothing wrong with questioning 
the situation or questioning things. But we need to understand is that God has a plan, amen? And whether it goes in accordance with what we want, that makes no difference. See, and that's part of the problem sometimes is that when things don't go our way, we sometimes want to do what? We want to get mad at God. Well, God, you didn't, you didn't answer my prayer. Well, see, just because your prayer didn't get answered in the way that you wanted it to or in the timing that you wanted it does not mean that God is not good or that he's still not on the throne. And that shouldn't stop you from praying because of those things. Amen? God is good. Regardless of how things may end up, God is good. We have to, you know, understand that. We have to believe that, no matter what happens, that God is good. So here you have King Solomon... He gathers all the children of Israel, and here they are, they finish the temple, and what do they do? They start to sing with their instruments, right, and their voices, praising and thanking the Lord. They lifted their voice, right, and they praised the Lord, saying, He's good, His mercy endures forever. Now, this isn't the only time in the Bible they do that, but I, I'm using this just as a reference to show you that this is a pattern that we need to follow at all times of thanking God. Now, we talked about that Thursday is Thanksgiving, and we as a nation come together and we celebrate you know, Thanksgiving, and you know, we collectively thank God for all He's done, all He's doing as a nation. But we talked about this last week. You and I as a Christian, as a believer, this is something that we do on a daily basis. Amen? It, it, it's a, a lifestyle. Right? Constantly praising and thanking God. Singing to Him. Right? Singing to God is what we should be doing on a regular basis. Because why? Because He's good. And His mercy endures forever. See, when you start to focus on His goodness, and you start to focus you know, on all those great attributes of God, the things that aren't right in your life, they start to get smaller. They start to get smaller. See, I was sharing this with a few people this morning, like... Uh, Nicoletta and Phil and Brother Kenny here, you know, they hadn't seen me since I've lost my eye, so I had to bring them up to speed, right? But I had to remind them and say, I choose to focus on my left eye, so you can call me lefty now. <laughs> I choose to be thankful for my left eye because it's good. I see with it. I just shared with you, I think, last week or a few weeks ago, how I had to uh, renew my driver's license. The uh, annual, or you know, it's every five years, you get the letter in the mail, and, it, and this time it said, you cannot do it online this time. You've got to come in and see us, take a vision test. So I was equipped, had my letter from the doctor, went in, and uh, I ended up having to take this uh, driving test, and I passed it with flying colors. So when you go to the DMV, you'll see my picture on the wall. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I passed. I passed it. Why? Because just because I don't have two eyes don't mean I can't drive. Amen? See, we can't let those challenges in our life stop us. You know, I get encouraged when I see people who don't have arms or legs and they're out there running marathons. Right? And here we are, you know, we can walk and dress ourselves. And there's people out there that will go out there and do the impossible just to prove to themselves that it doesn't matter what they're dealing with, 
They're not going to let anything stop them. They're going to be determined to find a way to continue to go forward. Amen? And, and see, that's why we have to do the same. See, as a Christian, God has equipped you with so much. But if you don't know how to tap into what He's equipped you with, it does you no good. God has given you the tools that are necessary to live this life victoriously. To be able to, you know, conquer, you know, your giants. To be able to climb those mountains. And it may, could be physically or it could just be metaphorically. The bottom line is God has equipped you and I to be able to do great things. And we can't let things stop us. But what ends up stopping us is the fact that when we start to focus on all those things that aren't right in our life. See, if you're so focused on all the things that aren't right in your life, how do you have time to ever see the goodness of God? Now, don't get me wrong. I, I could have, you know, got into my self-pity, you know, uh, you know, closet or whatever you want to call it and been like, oh, poor me. You know, they had to remove my eye, you know, and, you know, and just start feeling down and all these kinds of things. And, you know, what would that have done for me? What would that have done for me? Right? So that was not an option for me. See, that was not an option. I had to say, you know what, Lord? Thank you for my left eye. Thank you. So this is what we have to do, is we have to focus on what is good. And that's why we give thanks. Amen? Now let's go to the book of Psalms uh, 105. We were there last week. Psalm 105. 105. And we're going to go here to verse number 1. In Psalms 105, verse 1, what does it say? It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing psalms to Him. Talk of all His wondrous works. Glory in His name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek, seek His face evermore. Remember His marvelous works which He has done. His wonders and the judgment of His mouth. See, once again we're being reminded to give thanks. We need to learn how to give thanks. Now have you ever stopped to think that when we leave planet earth and we go to heaven, what is heaven going to be like? Have any of you ever thought about that? I, I have, right? I have. Did you know the Bible talks about what we're going to be doing in heaven? Yeah, it says we're going to be flying around. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what the angels do. See, there's a, there's a distinct difference between angelic beings and human beings. We are not angels. And I hate to burst some bubbles here, but I, I have to give you truth. You know, a lot of people, they think when a loved one dies that they're now your heavenly angel. You know, grandma or grandpa or uncle or auntie. They're my angel now. Well, it's okay if you want to believe that. I can't force you to believe anything. But the Bible says that the angels were created for you and I. The angels were created for you and I. The Bible says they are ministering spirits. They were created to work on our behalf. The Bible also says that one day we are going to rule and reign with God over the angels. Amen? So angels were created to work on our behalf. And we will rule and reign over them. Right? God has enough angels. Okay? Now, in the book of Revelations, the Bible tells us what is going to be taking place in heaven. Right? Let me just take you there real quick. Let's go to Revelations chapter 4. 
You know that book that you're afraid to go and read? Right? Especially at nighttime before you go to sleep. Don't read Revelations before you go to sleep. You're going to have a nightmare. You don't have to be afraid to read this book. God has promises for the believers. Ro Revelations chapter 4. Look at verse 8 says. Revelations chapter 4 verse 8. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night. Now, just to throw some information out there for you, there are some different schools of thought regarding the four living creatures. I just want to establish that, right? Theologians are not in 100% agreement of who the four creatures are, right? One school of thought, the four creatures represent the four corners of the earth and represent all living things, right? That's one school of thought, that the four creatures represent the four corners of the earth, represent living things. Another school of thought is that the four creatures are actually some type of angelic being, right? You see how it says they had wings, right? Eyes, these kinds of things, right? But the point being is this, right? You do your research and you come to your own conclusions, but I want to focus on this. This is the point I want to show you. So it says that they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So what do they do? They don't rest day or night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. They are praising God day and night without rest. Gives you an idea of what's going to be happening in heaven. We are going to be praising God as well how could we not praise God when you're in his presence right and so I just wanted to give you that little glimpse because we need to learn how to praise God we need to learn how to be a people of thanksgiving and praise because that's part of what we're going to be doing in heaven amen Psalm 105 tells us give thanks call upon his name and make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. So our lives need to reflect thanksgiving. So it's one thing to sit at the dinner table on Thursday and say, let's pray and let's give thanks. And that's good. We need to do that. We need to be thankful. Why? That's why we pray when we eat. To take sickness and disease from the midst of us and also to thank God for His provision and meeting our needs. That's why we pray. But let's take this a step further. How can I show God that I am thankful for all He's done? How can I, how can I reflect that to God? See, Praying is just not enough. Our lives have to reflect how thankful we are. Amen? Our lives have to reflect that. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to go here to verse number 16. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In the International Standard Version, it actually says, let people see your good actions. So isn't it interesting, as people see you being thankful, what happens is, if you are really thankful... It causes you to do what? To do something. See, if you're really thankful, you're not just going to be saying it, right? It says, 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, why would you have good works that people could see? Because you're thankful. See, when, when you're thankful, it causes you to action. Amen? It causes you to want to do something. See, no longer just saying it like, oh God, thank you. Now you're saying, I need to do something. I need to show God how thankful I am. I need to let my life reflect how thankful I am. See, there's a difference there. See, there is a difference. Look at verse 14. We're still in Matthew chapter 5. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Right? You are the light. So if you are the light of the world, then how do you show that you're the light? Well, you need to be a reflector of the knowledge of God. You need to let others see that. See, and that's why it comes to doing. Amen? Being a doer of the Word, not just a hearer only. Let, let me show you just a couple more verses as we start to wind down. Let's go to the second book of Corinthians chapter 4. We are a people who are thankful. Amen? We are thankful to our God for all He's done, all He's doing. Yes, we are a thankful people. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to go here to verse number 15. Second Corinthians 4.15. The word says, For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. See, what the Apostle Paul is saying right here is this. See, he's saying, hey, he endured suffering so that God's grace would reach many people who would give thanks to the glory of God. See, this was the, what the Apostle Paul is saying. Let's go to chapter 5, verse 15. We're still in 2 Corinthians. Now we're going to chapter 5, verse 15. Look at this. And He died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. Oh, i gotta, I got to say that again. And He died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. So in other words, the Apostle Paul is taking it one step further here and he's saying, hey, don't live for yourselves any longer. Live for Him. Live for Him. How do you live for Him? Well, it becomes lifestyle. That sounds like a name of a car club, doesn't it? Lifestyle. Lifestyle. It's what we do on a daily basis. Amen? It's not only saying how thankful we are to God. Oh Lord, we thank you for being so good to us. But now, we start to show it in our actions. Right? We start to show it in our actions. Right? You know, why is it that we have to sometimes discipline our children. Why, is it, why isn't it that we, can, we can't just tell them, don't do that no more? Or, you know, just give them some instruction verbally. Why is that not enough? Because see, sometimes we can say it 
so much that what ends up happening is that it doesn't really have an effect. How many times do we hear parents say, you know, you know, don't do that, you know, or you're going to be in trouble, or don't, don't, you know, don't make me get up, or, and they're saying it over and over again, repeating themselves. That's an empty threat is what it basically is, right? That's something we should learn in parenting. Don't give empty threats. You say it once, and then don't say it again. I'm guilty of it. I used to give those empty threats. Don't make me get up. Say it about ten times. Don't make me get up. And they're up probably just laughing at me. He ain't going to do nothing. <laughs> but when I finally get up, uh-oh, he's up. Now that sends a message. So the reason why we have to carry out sometimes an, an action when we're disciplining our children is because we have to show them now that, hey, that it's necessary that they learn, you know, what we're trying to teach them, right? See, so actions are very important. That is why when we talk about love, that love is not simply a feeling. Oh, I love you. Love is an action. God showed us that by what? By giving all. See, God ha has told us that he loves us, but he also showed it to us in action by Going to the cross, giving of himself, giving all. He showed us in action. So how do we return, you know, that to him? Well, Paul tells us here that we should no longer live for ourselves, but live for him who died for us and rose again. Lifestyle. Right? We got to be a people who reflect thanksgiving and how we live. Amen? And, and so what I'm trying to emphasize this morning is, is that, you know, as we get ready to celebrate Thanksgiving on Thursday, you know, with all those turkeys and hams and tamales and whatever your tradition is. I know everyone has different traditions and, you know, your whatever side dishes you have, that great meal. You know, and, and you know, we get together with family, the in-laws, the outlaws, right? <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> the bottom line is it's a time of you know, getting together, spending it with your family and friends, reflecting on the blessings in your life. Because whether you've, you believe it or not, there are things to be thankful for. Amen? Amen. But see, we as believers, we want to take some wisdom here from the Apostle Paul, and we want to let our lives reflect thanksgiving. Because when we let our light or excuse me, our life reflect thanksgiving, what ends up happening? Paul told us here in 2 Corinthians 4.15. He says it, he said, For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Amen? See, what ends up happening is that when other people start to see us reflect our thanksgiving towards God, and even though they know that, hey, man, they're, they're going through some things, but yet, man, they still don't stop praising their Jesus. They still are always thankful and praising their Jesus no matter what comes their way it gets others to see like, wow, he must be good. He must be a good God. Right? Because the Apostle Paul tells us that. That our thanksgiving, right, can cause people to see that. It says, 
having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. See, so when we have a lifestyle of thanksgiving, it causes others to see that. And it actually is a witness for God. Amen? Think about that. It becomes a witness for God. So I just want to encourage everyone to be mindful of that as you get ready to celebrate Thanksgiving with your loved ones this week, right? And everyone's so happy and, you know, all that good food that, you know, you're going to be eating, you know, to be like, you know what? Yeah. Just telling him I'm thankful is not enough. I got to reflect that in my life, my lifestyle. You know, the Apostle Paul gives us so many good lessons, and I'm going to close here with 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And he tells us here in verse 5, he says, Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, indeed, you are disqualified. You are qualified. That cross makes you qualified. You made the final cut. You made the team. Right? You know, in life at times, we sometimes feel like we're not included in certain situations. Anybody ever remember being a kid on the playground and they're picking teams? And they're like, I hope I get picked. I hope I'm not the last one. Well, guess what? God loves you so much that he said, you know what? I'm going ch- to pick you. I'm going to choose you. You're qualified. You're qualified. And so I just want to remind everybody that sometimes it's good to examine yourself, test yourself, you know, because we want to be able to make adjustments in our walk with God. Because, see, if you don't ever do those things, nothing will ever change. You'll stay right where you're at if you don't ever Examine yourself. So I want to encourage everyone this morning, this afternoon, continue to move forward. Know that God's got a plan for you. And know that as you start to focus on Him and being thankful and praising Him, guess what? You have less time to focus on your stuff, on your mess. See the difference there? You have less time and energy to focus on what's not right in your life when you're focusing on Him. And something dynamic starts to happen. I just want to encourage you to be mindful of that. Amen? We serve a good God. Let's never get tired of thanking Him and praising Him and telling Him how awesome He is. Right? There's always something to be thankful for in your life. You know, start thanking Him for those things. Praise Him and thank Him. Oh, He loves it when we lift Him up. If I can ask everyone to just bow their heads and close their eyes as we get ready to close this morning. You know, I just want to just encourage everyone to know that God has so much more planned for you. But see, He can't do it all. You have to do your part. Right? He says, as we draw close to Him, He will draw close to us. As you draw close to Him, He will draw close to you. You have to do your part. And your part is this, is learning to put more trust in Him, Learning to put, you know, your all in Him. 
Learning to live for Him. Paul said it. Don't live for yourselves any longer, but live for Him. Oh, He's, he's got plans. He's got big plans. And regardless of what may be going on in your life, at this season in your life, at this time in your life, those plans are still valid. They're still valid. He's, he's got great plans for you. And I want to encourage everyone to just thank Him and praise Him on a regular basis and watch as you put more of an emphasis on Him and take it off of yourself, something starts to happen. Your issues, those dilemmas in your life, all of a sudden they're not so big any longer. The stress starts to go down. Probably able to get a better night's sleep. You know, the list just goes on. Put your trust in Him. He's good. He's got a plan. Oh, Lord, I thank You for Your people. I thank You, Lord, for their faithfulness. I thank You for them, Lord. And Lord, I just ask right now, before we dismiss, Lord, that You would just touch them and show them how much You love them. Father, we know that regardless of what may be going on in our life, Your goodness never stops. So Lord, I, I pray for Your people that they see Your goodness in ways they've not seen before. Lord, that You would show them how good You are because Your mercy endureth forever. Oh Lord, I thank You for Your people. And I pray, Lord, that You would continue to just show them and guide them of how much they mean to You. Continue to encourage them. Oh Lord, we give You glory and honor. And Lord, I thank You that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Your angels have charge over them. That their needs are met, Lord. That they have an abundance for every good work. Oh Lord, I thank You and I praise You for Your people. Oh, we give You glory and we give You honor in the precious name of Jesus. And everyone says, Amen and Amen.